Welcome back friends. It is time for some more Big Deno plays Aeon Trespass. And we are about to face off against our first level four primordial. Very exciting times. I think I've marked that already. I have. It is an Akarian Harpy, as you can see from the picture. We find ourselves on timeline day 54 of 90. Um, we are about to loop back to where we placed Ariadne's anchor. And we have managed to successfully find the first piece of a chariot that we are hunting for. Uh, we found it right here. <clears throat> so that's exciting. Just got to find the second piece now. Um, I have to say that at this point, having a little bit of knowledge about the Cycle 3 map comes in very handy. I do think that uh, the first time you play Cycle 3, you are probably going to lose purely because you run out of time, you run out of doom. Uh, tracking down these pieces of the chariot is very, very hard work um, without some cheating um, or some knowledge already. So I'm fortunate that I have that knowledge and I think we'll be able to find that second chariot piece relatively quickly. Uh, our goal now is to just conserve the doom for as long as we possibly can. Uh, we, have, we have some good gear, we have some good titans, and we've got some, some Argonauts with some really nice combinations. Actually, I've got to tell you, the Timekeeper's Child, Full From Eden, is a lovely combo that I've never had before. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, uh, we do have a timeline battle. Uh, here on day 54, another structural technology, and then hopefully we will head onwards to find the next um, chariot piece after that. But let's go and have a look at our brave Argonauts. I've brought the Warkeeper in today um, to be, wield the Probability Blade. Uh, Warkeepers have the Cyclopean Might rule, which allows them to wield a three-handed weapon as if it were two-handed, which is very nice. You'll know how much of a fan I am of the Warkeeper. Sticking with the Returner and the Sphere Cast, it seems to be a pretty good combo. Um, bit of reposition, bit of um, supportive movement. Uh, enjoying that so far. Uh, Ulyssia, who is starting this encounter sealed, um, we've given her the Phoenix Xyphos. Uh, and that's uh, interesting. Um, We'll probably be able to do some damage with that. It's a sword though. So again, with the with the Akarian Harpy, you need to be managing your equipment and making sure you're timing the attacks right. Unfortunately, I don't have uh, one, I'd really like one more piece of armor. I'm, I'm using this Exile's Garb because it has um, Inspire and yeah, it's going okay. <laughs> uh, and finally, the Earthshaker and we're using the Earthshaker. This is a bit of a gamble because I want to try wielding the Shade Shield and the right Talon of Doom, which is a two-handed and a one-handed weapon, to allow me to leverage Quantum on the right Talon of Doom um, and also then have the Shield as well to attack. So a bit of a risk, but we'll see how it goes. Um, over here on the primordial sheet, so the level four Akarian Harpy has the same rules as before with deep cut. So we take danger at the end of each Titan round based on the number of bleeding tokens we have. Uh, we also have a new rule which is called Devour Hole. Um, and unfortunately, Devour Hole means that if we end the, um, basically the Titan turn or start of the primordial round, uh, next to him, we get eaten, we get swallowed. So that's an unfortunate rule. We've got a lot of reflexes there uh, available to avoid that. It is actually relatively easy to avoid with your reflexes because you've got this um, <clears throat> end of primordial round trigger. So pretty much every piece of gear that we have uh, that we will want to use has a reposition. Um, and so we shouldn't hopefully end too close. But we do have a escalation of one, two, that we need to do. One, two. One, 
two. Um, and that's it. There's still only three tokens on the board, fortunately. So, all right. Um, let's get cracking on the first primordial round. There is no start of primordial round effects other than consume. Oh, we'll just nip over here and shuffle these and determine facing direction. Nobody has any rage. Uh, Odysseus does have danger. I've already allocated the bleeding uh, things already. So it is uh, facing any direction. So we'll have him face where he's currently facing, I think. Yep. Yeah, interesting, interesting fight this one, friends. I think if we can if we can survive, we're still hitting on a nine, still only ten wounds. If we can survive a couple of rounds, we've we've got enough damage capacity to get through his armor. Where it gets really tricky against this guy is when you lose a couple of Titans and you don't have enough diversification in your weapon types to be able to manage that. So we'll see. We'll see if we can get it done. All right, let's get cracking. Uh, bleeding, bleeding, everything's good to go. Um, let's nip over here. A Talon Graze, non-bleeding Titan in sight. Well, the only non-bleeding Titan that we have, unfortunately, is the Returner. And it's a move and push back two. We don't have anything to prevent the push back. If you attack hits, raise your trauma level by one and resolve a trauma draw. Good time to get that one. So uh, gonna move to here. We can't stop push back two. One, two. Um, but we can, so, so we suffer bleeding one, so that goes there. If you attack, it's raise your trauma level by one. So three out of 10, we would need to roll three tens. Hey, we do not. So we raise our trauma level by one, which means we gain one danger. Uh, she starts on two fate because she's a returner. So one danger, we trigger a minor trauma draw. Time clocked, re-establish your time anchor, then gain the time clocked card. Okay. I don't actually hate that. Do we have any way to return from time clocked? No, we do not. Hmm. Maybe I do hate that. Uh, Returner doesn't have anything she can do to stop that. Fair enough. So that's that card done. And then old mate is going to suffer predation and that will be the war keeper. So he's going to move to here and going to have three on a 10 from predation. We block none, <clears throat> so that's six danger coming in. Six goes down to four, and he's on five, and the war keeper, that's a grave trauma. Gain two fates. Uh, he then gets bleeding one, so he goes to Bleeding three. All right, well, uh, at that point, I think we will use the Pursuer. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, 
wonder if we should use the advanced reflex to allow our team to get in range on the war keeper. Yep. War keeper's going to use an advanced reflex to move one, two to there. So this guy would have had to come to there. Yep. That's better. Cool. All right. So war keeper done. <coughs> Uh, so the person we want to go first with is the person with the most bonuses to hit, which probably is the War Keeper, but we don't really want to go first with him because of the Bleeding Token situation. Neither the Earthshaker nor Heraclides have any uh, issues here with that. So if we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3... Four, five. Does the Earthshaker doesn't have spike breakers, so he's got to go one, two, three, four, five. She's got to go one, two, three, four, five. So I think the Earthshaker is the best option using the right talent of Doom. So here's the plan of attack, friends. <laughs> Earthshaker over here goes first, gains a bleeding token. He's going to use a um, ice elixir so because he has no fate and no danger he does not have any trauma level and so he doesn't have to draw any bleeding cards um, he will spend a fate though to use the ice elixir to clear two bleeding tokens from himself he's then going to move one two three four oh, sorry one two three four five into the rear so he's in the blind spot um, so when an Earthshaker attacks, if there are no opening or break tokens in the pool, he gains an opening and a break token. Uh, he's using the right Talon of Doom, which is a new item we picked up, which is great. Uh, it does actually have Quantum if we have three Bleeding Tokens. So we won't use our, we won't use our thing yet. It gets plus one uh, break if we've got three Bleeding Tokens. So we won't use our Ice Elixir just yet. We'll do it... Uh, afterwards. So he's plus one precision from the Argo Cryptex. He's plus one, plus two precision from that. He's plus one precision from the pool. He's plus one from the blind spot. So he is one dice, which is one, two, three, four, five. So he's needing a four. He rolls a five. Heraclides hits. He gets the feathered back. Now this is actually a six because of the <coughs> Um, thing. Uh, this AT token is a six. Now we have quantum, so we can treat our weapon as anything we want right now. Anything we want. Any way you want it, that's the way you need it. Uh, two blacks, plus a red from the Earthshaker, plus... He's got two automatic power from the right Talon of Doom. So we get there comfortably. We had a power reroll, should we have needed it? Well, you didn't actually see that, but trust me, we got there. Um, I just realized it's an extra danger from both of those attacks. Oh, that attack, rather. Because of this little thing. Okay, so gain bleeding up to one. So we're now bleeding four, which is problematic. And the harpy now moves to the center of the board and turns the face the most titans. I'm not sure if I've done that correctly. No, so he is going to suffer unavoidable knockback from here. One, two, three, four, five for unavoidable knockback, is it? Yes, however. We will attempt to uh, 
No, we don't have that. I was going to say we attempt to tumble. No tumble. We could <clears throat> suffer time clocked instead. But if we do that, we're not going to be able to do much about our bleeding. To yeah, I suppose we can just arrive from thingy next turn. Yeah. So we suffer crash. We suffer a danger. We go to four bleeding tokens. We'll then use our four from Eden to suffer time clocked instead of knockdown. So he's going to be time clocked and sit from there. Should have tried to prime the cannon. Failed to prime the cannon. Great. <laughs> and I will... Um, I will remove bleeding tokens from Ulyssia at this point. Yep, she will remove two bleeding tokens using the... <coughs> thing. Uh, Penelope goes, she's going to gain a bleeding token. She's going to flip her time clocked card over. She has two bleeding tokens. Oop. It is insulted and faithful wound. Damn, would have liked insulted in there. So her turn's done. Her time clock card is now arriving, so she will get to come back next turn. Our good friend, the Earthshaker, his time clock is irrelevant because he's got Timekeeper's Child. He can return from time clock whenever he wants. The Right Talent of Doom has two openings. One, two, and our friend, uh, Commander... What's his name? Also has an opening. So we've got plenty of openings. We did a wound, so we'll do our escalation. <coughs> and with quantum, we get to decide what weapon trait we want that to have. What weapon trait do we want that to have, I wonder? If we're going to attack with a blade next... So we've got sword and blade to come. So sword and blade. So we will definitely go with the club and slab sword option for our weapon. So he's done. She's done. We've got these two to go. Uh, so we'll do Ulyssia first. So she's sealed. So she's going to give herself a major trauma grave trauma sorry and she gets fused souls okay take that out the titan dies for the end of the battle so does the argonaut rude awakening if we need to fine um cool <coughs> So she loses a fate, but she didn't have any. She's going to move one, two, three, four to here. Uh, she has no bleeding tokens. She is going to make an attack with the Pheno Xiphos, Phoenix Xiphos. There's plenty of openings in the pool. She is once again in the rear. Oh no, he turned to face the most titan, so he probably would have been like that. No, uh, actually, yeah, he probably would stay like that because there's only two titans on the board. Cool, we'll take the rear. A nine and a one. Gain of fate to reroll the one. Does the Phoenix Cyphos have anything? Power reroll one. Two hits. Likelihood of wounding this is oh, minimal. So we need a seven. Gain the sealed card. <laughs> One, two. Uh, not much we can do other than hard roll these. Oh shit, we've given it a lash. That is five from these two. We do have an automatic power reroll from the Phoenix Xiphos. Come on, Phoenix Xiphos. No, how dare you. Man, I wish I had some break tokens in the pool. Okay. Um, unfortunately, we gain the sealed condition card. 
which we just had. But we will now vault. Ooh. Clear two bleeding tokens from him. Um, we will inspire no one. We will reposition two. We don't need to. Actually, we do need to. One, two. <coughs> and that's discarded. We've got two openings and we've got two fire from the Phoenix Xiphos and then we'll put a break in there as well from level one on the Dreamwalker. Over to our Warkeeper friend. Uh, we'll actually do that and we'll do that. He's going to draw one bleeding token for a major trauma. Uh, yep, he's going to draw two major trauma. Moira Verdict, Kratos Glimpse, which goes away. No, he actually has a rage because he survived a major trauma. He's then going to gain a rage and make an attack with the probability blade. He rolls an eight. That is a hit. This is a five in total. Uh, and he's rolling one, two, three. And he's done easily five. He's going to lose one fire. He's going to lose the two openings. In the pool, we're going to have uh, two breaks from his level one, two openings, and two hope, and another opening. So that's much tastier looking. So we're two wounds down. That was a blade. Right? Probability blade, yep. So that goes there. We have another level two going in. That is all. We've done all of our things. Uh, he's got reposition two. So he's going to reposition one, two. Uh, sorry, we've got to do push back three, gain pleading up to one. Push back three. One, two, three. And then he's going to reposition one, two. Yep. That's the end of our Titan round. Uh, unfortunately, Everyone's going to gain some danger except for Ulyssia. So he's going to gain two danger. Uh, she's going to gain two danger. One, two. Gaining no danger and then gaining four danger. Awful. From deep cut. Primordial round. So start of the round. Uh, anyone adjacent to him is eaten. No one is adjacent to him. So we move on to drawing an AI card. We draw Manic Cutting, a Titan in blind spot. No, closest non-bleeding Titan in sight has to be Ulyssia. Four on an eight. <coughs> So she takes it down to a seven because of the exile's garb. Um, so that's two, and she's got two re-rolls. There is a pushback here as well. Oh. One, two. Is there a no, move and push back to an attack? 
Going to rock steady on slippery terrain, that's not helpful. Fate's not higher than seven. Uh, knocked down, oh, rock steady, knocked down on thingy. That's good, I'm just going to check rock steady, I'm pretty sure that's immune to knock down. Yeah. Cool. Bleeding two. She is now bleeding two. <coughs> and unfortunately, she's going to suffer two danger, one two and one fate. But she can ignore the knockdown thanks to Rocksteady. Would have been awesome if she missed all of the hits. He's then going to predation. He's going to move to here. He's then going to attack. <coughs> uh, one, two, three on a ten. Block one. Each hit deals two danger. So that's four danger coming in. Four. Stays at four. Oh no. Oval draw already. gain an extra one because he survived an oval draw and he's in real trouble <laughs> he's in more trouble than the early settlers um, that is all for the, the primordial turn so it's over to us okay everyone is still bleeding this is an unfamiliar position for us The Earthshaker has a bleeding limit of, however, he is not going to have any luck whatsoever. So we should use him to clear Ulysses' bleeding. All right, all right, all right, all right. We're going to start with the Earthshaker. Going to arrive from time clock. What's his current danger situation? It's five. So. He gains a bleeding token, he goes to five. He has a bleeding limit of five. He's gonna draw the top five major traumas and clear off the good ones. Bad. All right, two good ones going away. Um, <clears throat> so he arrives from time clocked. He's going to land over here. He's going to go one, two, three, four, five. He's going to spend a fate to clear two bleeding tokens from himself. He's going to spend a free action to clear two bleeding tokens from Ulyssia. And he's going to sacrifice his um, combat action to clear two more bleeding tokens from himself. Or does he gain a fate sacrifice his combat action to unexhaust all of his gear and then spend his ice elixir again. I think that is a better way to do it. So he's down to one bleeding token. Ulyssia will go now. What's Penelope's? Yeah, she's a minor. Uh, we might actually go with uh, the Returner. She's going to arrive from Time Clocked. She's going to land right here. Start of her turn. She's going to draw one, two, three. One, two, three. Faint goes away. Already lots of bad ones on the, on the top now. Ooh. Uh, she will sacrifice her movement to... <clears throat> clear two bleeding tokens and then she will discard two bleeding tokens from herself using her ice elixir so that's done 
So she's got no bleeding tokens left either. She will then use the sphere cast and she is in range. So she will shoot the sphere cast. Because she is on a time anchor, she is plus one precision. So one, two, three, four, she is in range. One, two, three, four. Uh, plus one precision, there's one, two, three openings in the pool. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So she's hitting on a three. She hits on an eight. We flip this bad boy over. And it is a five. Okay. So the good news on this one, uh, we do have this next to the discus. So that is going to add plus one, and then we have plus one from this AT token. So we're looking for a six, but we've got one, two, three, four, five dice, and it's the sphere cast. So we've easily got there, which is great. So we've done a wound, push back three, one, two, th uh, three, we go like that. So that smashes that. She will uh, reposition one. Oh, she had to draw a sealed card. Oh man, I'm getting hammered here. Sealed. Fate worse than death. Gain the priority target token. Fine. She loses a fate. Oh no, that's that's not her. That's Ulysses. Ulysses is about to go now anyway. So. Was a fake game priority target token. No longer sealed. Okay. She, she's repositioned one. So she's done. We build the pool. She's got her one keeper. So we'll keep an, a break in the pool. And then the sphere cast. No, no, we'll keep an opening in the pool, I should say. <coughs> and then the sphere cast lets us put one, two, three fire in the pool. Perfect. One, two, three, fire. <coughs> so we've gone with both Penelope and Heraclides. So we've got the Warkeeper and Ulyssia to go. We'll do Ulyssia next. So she's going to bring her time anchor over here. She is wielding the Phoenix Xiphos, so it comes back into her hand. And she has reposition two. Doesn't have reach, but she can get into the rear. So she will go... Uh, to here, one, two, she has no bleeding tokens, she will make an attack, one, two, with the Phoenix Xiphos, have I done my escalation, I'll double check that, I don't think I have, but it's two sevens, which is two hits, uh, there is four, no I have not, so another one goes away, Under the twos already. Seven. Mm. So I think we got spiral on this. Yeah, we do have two spirals. So I think we're going to spiral in and try and get a crit. See if we can bypass that signature. Um, <clears throat> so we're hitting on plus three, plus four, plus five. So we're hitting on fours. Maybe we just spiral a crit. Um, and Rage, yeah, I think we'll just spiral the crit, so that's a 7, it's a risk, but, yeah, it's a 6, so no good, um, so we are going to suffer a signature here, it's a shame.
Uh, two whites and a red. And she's got a power reroll one for three. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, this is a uh, sword, so we are looking for nine. Is that right? One from being adjacent to that. That should be here. And two for that, so we need a nine. Uh, <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we need to re-roll that and get a hit. That's good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have three fire tokens in the pool. That's a wound at least. It's our fourth wound. So we are going to suffer the signature, but let's do all of this shebang. that was a sword, we'll move that to there. So she is going to suffer the signature, which is this one. Move and push back two. One, two. Actually her reposition is going to be in trouble now. That's all right, we'll be able to motivate her with Someone. Oh, knock back three. That'll be fine. Um, <clears throat> so she has three on a ten, which goes down to three on a nine. She has three re rolls. That's none. So three re rolls. Blocks none. Each hit deals two. She suffers bleeding one. So that's six. She goes to eight. The grave trauma, we know that's bad. The grave trauma is C pattern. Huh. Chain of glory, look at the top cards of the BP and AI decks. Don't really want to do that. <laughs> Chain of glory. I wonder if I have to. <laughs> Let's have a look at what's coming next. It's fine because it's not going to be there. Oh, we're fine. Vestigial wing. Okay. <clears throat> After attack, knock back three. Oh, no, we're getting knocked back into the thing. All right, we're going to use our... <laughs> we're getting knocked back into the uh, pit of nothingness. We're definitely not accepting that. I don't accept it. We'll use our reflex on our thing. So we're fine. Signature done. It's now our last argument, which is the war keeper. We're going to move one, two, three. Have we built the pool yet? No, we haven't. So the pool from the Phoenix Xiphos is two fire, two openings. She has a break and an opening on level one and level two from her attack. And that is it. Oh, that's right. I've got to remember, I've got the spiral shield there so I can add an evasion. Hmm. Important one to remember, Deno. I would have made those dodges at six. Warkeeper. Moves in the back with the probability blade into the rear. Um, <clears throat> we know this is going to be another nine. I wonder if we should, yeah, instead of an opening, we'll just go double break. So we've got two fire, two break, so four in the pool. Um, probability blade hits on a plus seven, so we're hitting on twos from our, oh, rage five already. Wonderful. It's an eight. Do we want to spiral? Probably no need to spiral. We're hitting on twos though, so we're one in ten of getting a crit. <coughs> so 
I think we should crit. Um, I forgot that he's about to add three bleeding tokens. So, do uh, I haven't used my I haven't used my thing this turn. Yeah, I will cannon off two of them. So it'll go to two, and then we'll just draw the top two. Grave Triumph, break the wheel, boo. Death door, boo. Spiraling. Four, still a hit. Where's a fate? Not a crit. Would have liked a crit. Um, <clears throat> two whites, two reds from the Warkeeper. Lots of power rerolls, lots of fun stuff to do. Don't need any of it, I don't think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's enough. There's another three popped in here. And we need to think about which one we want to move now. Who's attacking next? I don't know who's attacking next. Uh -huh. While I mull over that, this guy moves to the centre of the board and turns to face the most Titans. He's done. The Warkeeper has reposition. One, two, and... <clears throat> There's definitely two openings, and there's definitely two hope. We get two breaks on level one. We get an opening on level two. Push back, no. Opening on five. <coughs> so given that we've got opening heavy, we'll probably go with the shade shield on the Earth Shaker, which is a shield. So I think we'll move this one to here. Move the one that was there. So that opens up the, the discus shield, potentially. Um, it's a reasonable turn. Five wounds down. One, two, three, four, five. We draw the next AI card. <clears throat> Serrated Swipe, non-bleeding Titan in sight. So it's either the Returner or the Earthshaker. Um, so it's either of those. There's no priority target there. So we get to choose, move and push back to. We will go the Earthshaker. Ah, no, sorry, I lie. Uh, the Earthshaker is bleeding. He's got one. She's got one. She's got one, so it has to be the Returner. Uh, great. So, move and push back and attack. Push back. One, two. She doesn't have anything to reduce pushbacks. No. Nope. Um, it's all the way down here. You can't see there. He's here. Bleeding two. Wonderful, just when we were getting a hold of our bleeding situation. If the attack hits, which is four and nine, so it's one block, it deals danger equal to two plus the number of your bleeding tokens, so that's four danger. One, two, and gain two fate. Four, but she does have the Siren Cataphract armor. She takes it down to five. Okay, so we're drawing a gray major trauma. <coughs> we know it's not a positive one. <laughs> oh, gain two fates. One, two. And after surviving a major or grave trauma, lose a fate. So thank you, Penelope. And then knockdown. 
which we can't do anything about. So she's knocked down. Uh, we could use the Pursuer Ultimatum, actually, which would stop the knockdown. Uh, yeah, I think we will. We'll use a Fate Pursuer Ultimatum knockdown. I think we're going to be doing nothing with her. One, two, three. <coughs> actually, we can do that, because we have diagonal movement. Cool. <coughs> So that's that one done. We now do predation, which unfortunately is going to target Ulyssia because uh, and so we will spend a thing with Odysseus to use the Sun Guard for advanced reflex. One, two. He's going to move to there. And make an attack against the Alicia at this point. What's her situation? She spend a fate to dodge. This is three on a ten, so it goes into three on a nine, goes down to three on an eight with three rerolls. Of course we roll a crit evade. Huh. No. Damn. Uh so she just suffers one danger. Well, that's good, I suppose. Mm, grave trauma. We know it's a bad one. Oh, look, suffer death one. Wonder if we should have. Uh, yeah, we'll actually use our um, possibility matrix to put that on the bottom because that one just kills us. We can't do anything about it. So instead, we get. Godly Resolve, you may discard all condition cards, condition tokens, and Ambrosia tokens. We will do that, absolutely. Condition cards is also fate worse than death. Nice. And the bleeding. <coughs> that probably changes what we're going to do here, actually. Uh, and the Ambrosia. Good time to draw Godly Resolve and good time to use that ability. That's it. Five wounds down. We should be able to do it this turn if we are fortunate. So the Earthshaker, I think, is still our best play for first. No one's died. Can't get a crit chance. He's going to gain a bleeding token, which is going to give him quantum. Mmm. Mmm. What have we got on top of two? Earthshaker is our best option here. We need three bleeding tokens. Or we just attack with a shield. Yep. Shield in the back is our best play. Earthshaker, straight line forward, moves to there. Oh, he's this one. He has the Shade Shield. He will roll to attack with the Shade Shield. He will gain a Rage. There's plus four opening tokens in the pool. He's in the rear. So, uh, and he's got Precision Buff, so he hits on a six. There's no point chasing crit chances because he can't get crit chances. He's attacking with a shield, so he's got no... Uh, <coughs> uh, no issues on the adaption board because uh, the shield's here. So it's just a nine. Just a nine, he says. Black, white, red, and we have one automatic break. So we're looking for an eight on these with... Couple of breaks and some openings. All right, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's enough. I'll move that out of the way uh, and just step you through that again. That one's automatic. This hope token is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
three, four, five, six. Two hope. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. Good. Good work, Shade Shield. Uh, the Shade Shield has Inspire. It has Spiral 1. It has Hope 2. It has Opening 2. It has Reposition 1. It has Succor. So I think he's going to get knocked down because he gets bleeding up to 2. All right, so he gets bleeding up to 2. I forgot to check the, ma the Major Trauma. So he takes a giant gash on top and... Heroic death, fine. Harpy moves to the center of the board. Uh, he will use his sun guard for one to move to there. The Harpy moves to the center of the board and turns to face the most titans. It's facing that way. That is the most titans. <coughs> uh, the shade shield, hope two, opening two. There's an opening and a break on the level two for Heraclides. He's got reposition one. That's fine. Uh, so he's done. We're now at six wounds. So if we get two threes here, we are good. So that's a three. And... That's a three. Now, if we look here, we get to decide which one of these moves. We're going to try prime the cannon again. We fail again. Oh. What are we attacking with next? Blade or sword? Blade is probably our better option, maybe. Sword, actually, I think we will go with the sword. So that will move to there. No, yeah, we'll go blade. Yep, yeah, okay, cool, 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 cool. Understand why, what I'm doing. So the war keeper's going to go. So he is going to start his turn there. He's going to move one and he's going to make a punch. With the probability blade, there's three openings in the pool, so he's hitting on anything. Eight is a hit. He had to commit with the weapon. He goes a six rage. Um, oh, ten. Oh, signature. Oh, that sucks. Um, might be okay, actually. We might be able to die and then, um, and then use his free action. Uh, before he did that, however, he's going to move his regression token across one so that he gets a free free swing. Unfortunately, he's not going to be able to do anything with his free swing because he doesn't get a bonus attack. It doesn't, yeah. Bummer. All right, well, one, two, three, four. Two openings and a single break. It has clutch as well, which is nice. This is going to be tricky. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If we power reroll this one and get one, we are through. We've got a wound, which is great. So that's a three. So unfortunately, over here, this uh, this is another three coming in. This goes on the bottom. We lose a one from this one. That moves over to the blade. We build the pool. There is two openings. One, two. There is two hope. There is two break. There is another opening. There is another opening. There is another break. And the sword itself. Oh, we had clutch anyway. Actually, that's interesting. We had clutch. So clutch lets you just automatically get there if you need to. <coughs> Reposition two. One, two. Uh, 
Um, yeah, so the sword can do it. The cestus can do it. Um, so, yes. Unfortunately, he had to gain another bleeding token. I've been very lax with my bleeding tokens this turn. Oh, man, Burning Heart was on top too. Oh, devastating. Anyway, uh, he's going to get pummeled by the... Oh, he won't move because he's just going to get pushed back to there. He's getting pummeled by that. I think it's just going to be an oval draw. I don't think we're going to be able to avoid this. Uh, yep, that's a lot of fails. Uh, it is six danger coming in. That goes down to five, so that's 14, but we'll spend our cast off so we don't have to put thing in. It's just an oval draw. This one, you live. I don't think it mattered, although I would not have really wanted to lose my Warkeeper. He gains a Rage. He has to gain a Rage from the Able Draw, so we won't get an extra one. All comes down to either the Returner or Ulyssia. I think we will go Ulyssia. He's got more Rage, actually. She's got one. She's got three. <coughs> We'll go Ulyssia. One, two, three, four, five. Into the rear. She's got Spike Breakers, so she can do that. She doesn't have Quantum. But it is a sword, so she's only one on this. Phoenix Iphos. We will re-roll this one. And... Gain okay, a Rage. It's two hits. It's not deadly. And it is, yeah, we should be fine here. 10, well, maybe. We've got a lot of openings in the pool, but yeah, we need to roll well still. Uh, she has no bleeding tokens. Three breaks, two hope. That's enough. Sit down, you little dickhead. Uh, yeah. Losing no Titans there is, is lucky, but I'll take it. We definitely should have been gaining some danger. I forgot a lot of rules in that one. I feel like I'm a bit sloppy there. That's all right. Sloppy it around. It's 12 Ambrosia to start, just from fighting the level four. Then we've got a Razor Wing, uh, Harpy, Feather, 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 Razor Wing. One, two, sorry, one, two, three, four, five. Times by four Ambrosia is 20. And we have 12 feathers and eight Razor Claw. Lots of resources to play with. Didn't get to prime the cannon once, awful. Having a timeline, uh, we will reset Argonaut things. Gone, 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 gone. We'll lose three Argo Fate. One, two, three. We'll gain our technology now, and that was a structural tech. We will gain Chrono Sail, because we are in story 3A. And. We are then in the story phase, and I'm just going to go and pack some things up. Stand. All right, we're back. It was a good fight. 
Uh, we of course had the other from the fused souls, which means that Ulyssia is now fused with Fisher, the Hyperborean strain. So, um, pretty pretty good layout now. I feel like we've got enough damage uh, inbuilt to be able to do some things. We probably just need a few more break tokens coming out there. We've got a lot of openings and not a lot of breaks in our gear. Um, potentially it might be time to bring a logic breaker in instead of the returner perhaps. You can auto break in there. Anyway, just to go back to this, which I don't really look at too much anymore, but we did our expedition, we did our encounter. We have no adversary battle. We've done our advancement. We've taken chrono sail. We're onto the story step and we are on a map tile where uh, we have a chariot piece and that means we see story 108. All right, 108. Box of Black. A fierce blizzard whips at you, powerful winds scouring the snow-covered landscape with knife-like viciousness, while spires of black vein ice claw at the sky like tails, talons of frozen ambrosia. Ahead, a familiar outline, the shadow of Icarus's chariot, the aspirant, or rather, what remains of it. <clears throat> the heavenly craft is partially buried in snow, the glacier already beginning to consume it. You can see where the ice has formed a perfectly smooth, almost obsidian layer over the hull, the result of partially melting when the white-hot wreckage crashed down and then refreezing over it, a hardened layer that will be nigh impossible to break through. The aspirant is barely intact, fractures running along its keel in dozens of places. Entire hull plates have been ripped away, and the interior of the vessel is exposed to the elements. It will never be fit for a voyage again, although you are certain that, had he the time, Alcibiades would be able to salvage much from this wreck. But you do not come for salvage, just answers. If M9 is marked, which it is, C109, Electrion steps forward, looking up at the looming bulk of the vessel with a furrowed brow. Something's not right, he mutters, his words almost lost in the howling winds. What do you mean? The aspirant looks different. Changes to the structure, reinforcement around the bridge. Almost, but not quite. As you inspect the hull, something else jumps out at you. A name on the prow, inscribed in bold letters for all to see. Imperative, not aspirant. This can't be my ship. Electrion's brow furrows even deeper. Only one way to find out. You squeeze the former commander's shoulder. We need to find the scriptos in the bridge. That will have a full record of the mission. The climb onto the ice lock wreck of the chariot, this imperative, is challenging in and of itself. Or we gain a thing on England's Odyssey. Thankfully, over the years you've developed gear to scale primordials. What's an unmoving object compared to that? There, through a crack in the hull, you work your way up to the bridge, backtracking several times due to corridors being blocked by rubble and ice. Finally, you enter the ruined command post, eerily silent. Scorch marks across the surfaces, scraps of clothing and burned flesh clinging to its now cold metal. Utter desolation. There is little left for you to salvage, but eventually you do manage to find a cubic device beneath the remnants of the helm. The scriptos. The exterior is marred by bar burn marks, but it's intact. You need to bring it back to the Argo for a full examination, but you are anxious and cannot wait that long. So you place it on a flat surface and activate it with a brush of your palm. An image begins to project itself onto the nearest wall. The interior of the bridge, the crew frantically rushing about, trying to attend to their tasks. Beyond the viewport, the sun's domain, a shadow growing before the ship, as if meaning to intercept it. The larger it becomes, the more frenzied the activity on the bridge becomes. At there, the heart of the chaos, Icarus stands, watching the forward viewport in stoic silence. Stoic silence. He ignores the increasingly despairing pleas of the crew, the terror growing in them by the moment. Flames are already beginning to consume parts of the ship, and the rattling is almost too much for it to bear, even for you. Icarus steps forward, closer to the viewport. Glimmering feathers of his cloak ripple, each one host to an unblinking eye. You don't remember that. It has been modified. The cloak is oddly shaped, as if giving the impression of folded wings. Icarus raises his arms out to either side. There is a long moment of motionless, motionlessness as he tilts his head back, his crew calling to him in confusion and consternation. Then, 
A violent explosion rips through the bridge. The viewport is shattered and blinding sunlight fills the room. The screaming crew members are all incinerated in an instant until all that remains is Icarus standing in the sun's rays, his feathered cloak billowing behind him. No, it's unfolding, twisting and bending into wing-like appendages, eerily lifelike. He pauses, looking back at the remnants of the ship and crew, and then leaps from the chariot out into empty space. The wings unfurl around him, and he powers even higher into the skies, heading straight for the shadowy shape of the Demesne. Dem Demain? Dem Demes? Demesne? Ice fills you. This was the final iteration of Icarus's mission, the one after yours, the one where he found the way to succeed. He needed everything you did for him, and then more than that, the ultimate sacrifice of his crew, his ship, everything he had worked so hard to create, to provide him with enough impetus to launch himself the final distance. And pitiless as it was, it had paid off. You follow the shape of Icarus as it is bathed in powerful beams of sunlight, not incinerated like the rest of his crew, but rather soaring, ascending, were it not for the price paid to achieve it, you might have described the fight, the sight as beautiful. Then Icarus's flee, fl blah, blah, blah. having a rough day. Then Icarus freezes in midair as if a butterfly caught in a spider's web. He hangs there for a long moment, transfixed in the sun's rays, before his body violently twitches. He twists and spins in place, his form warping and changing. The winged cloak melts, his body bloats, numerous tentacle appendages sprouting from smooth flesh. You watch in horror as the sun descendant is born, and all around him ice and snow begin to fall. Time itself twists and warps. In an incandescent flash, an explosion tears loose from him, the fledgling time front unleashed upon the world. O oh lad, Electrion raises a hand to his mouth from horror. in horror. He finally got his wish, you state grimly. He made it to the sun's domain and paid the price. And we sent him there. The former commander shudders. Me, you, the crew of the aspirant, we all felt, fed his dream of ascending to the sun, of meeting his father's expectations, and now he's the source of all this. Perhaps, you narrow your eyes, looking at the imagery the scriptos is showing you. It certainly seems like all the ice and chaotic energy that ravages Delphi flows from him. One Argonaut can reset their fate. Great. A chill fills you, matched only by the revulsion that clasps at your gut. It was not his failure, you realise, but his success that led to all of this. <clears throat> Icarus became the sun descendant, and it was your interference that allowed this to happen. The twilight age, the time front, the ice, the glaciers, and now, threatened to consume all. Even the loop that trapped you here, it is all because of this one victorious mission. Sorrow and regret fill you. You did this. All of it. All this time, you've been unknowingly fighting to make certain it happened, again and again. And now, the loop is sustained once more. As you gaze deeper into the memory of the scriptos, looking for something, anything that would give you a chance, <coughs> that would give you a clue for how to make this right, the towering Goliath of the Sun Descendant turns and looks directly at you. Dread immobilizes you. It can see through the recording, peering through space and time. A dozen more across its body open up to scream in rage. Atop the pulsating mountain of flesh, the torso of what was once Icarus throws its head back in a torturous, flesh rending screech. Before you know what's happening, the scriptos cracks and the sun descendant is here, above the wreck of the chariot. You do not have long. You need a junction with your titans and face it. Go to the Endure the Sun battle on page 132. After the battle and aftermath, see 107. Well... As you can see here, we have wise providence the first time. We haven't endured the sun battle, which is good. So I'm going to set up for a wise providence endure the sun battle. And I'll be back very shortly. All right. <clears throat> we are set up. It took me a little while <laughs> to figure out how I was going to approach this. Um, we have changed up our layouts and I finally got enough resources in that advancement phase before we went to the story phase to build a horse skull pauldron. Um, so I'm comfortable with where our armor is at. We have some fate safe equipment into this fight so we are going to get some second chances which is good and overall I think we're about as well placed as we can be now. The interesting thing about this um, fight, given that we have wise providence, 
is, and we'll just go to market and the evolution track. Uh, we will likely uh, not suffer any damage in the first turn if we do things properly. So we need to survive 10 rounds. And <clears throat> that is all. So I think we will try for some um, wounds in this one. We'll see how we go. We, we've got we've got some gear, right? So now's the time. We've got no danger on anyone, and we've got this wise providence. So this is a turn to a, a really a good opportunity for us. So. Um, we'll just nip over here to the Primordial. Nothing's changed with this guy. He's still got Merciless Sun, which he does at the start of his Primordial Round, which is where he attacks the Unshaded Board. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, before he... Yeah, he does his Sun move and attack. So we're going to be able to potentially uh, avoid some... Um, Avoid some attacks by good and careful placement of our Titans. Um, I should be able to turn my face back on there. That's just for me, really. Uh, then he's going to draw his AI card. There is no escalation. Um, and Glaciate the Time Anchor, rewind to the Titan with the highest fate. Fine. Okay, so uh, we'll go straight into it. Because of the wise providence, we actually start our turn now. And so uh, we haven't taken him, we've taken an ascender. So because it's our turn, all of our titans are going to start here. However, we might try to sneak in a cheeky wound with the returner after everyone's done their moves and attacks. So we'll have a look here. Um, so we know the Primordial is gonna to move to here, which means we need to be facing behind this way to avoid merciless sun attacks. We have, with Ulysses the Dreamwalker, she actually has glacial fabric so she can glaciate an adjacent space. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we'll start with the War Keeper. One, two, three, four, five, moving to there. And his thing's there. We will then glaciate an uh, adjacent space with Ulyssia. And that will cost her a fate. Uh, she starts at two fate because she is a thingy. And so we'll put out a thing here. She will then sacrifice her movement. Uh, sorry, her <coughs> combat action to uh, unexhaust. And then the ascender will move to here. So our... with a sphere caster she's got to roll a nine to hit which is unlikely uh we'll see so she's going to move one two three four five one two three yep so she can shoot from there uh she does not have One, two, three, four, five. I think she can do that. One, two, three, four, five, six. She'll actually just go to there just in case. And then she's got reposition on her attack. So um, you'll be able to see there. So she's going to fire the sphere cast. She has to gain a rage. She has to gain a fate to commit. She's hitting on a nine, which is unlikely. Oh, she rolls a nine. Cool. 
Wound, create a vantage point. Perform signature against the attacker. Um, it's a six, there's no AT bonuses, so we're just four reds plus her, her red to begin with. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, she got, we got a power reroll. We should definitely try for it here, right? Returner doesn't have any. <clears throat> There's no clutch. Do we want a fail trick? <coughs> fail is a rewind, which means she's gonna be in a shaded position anyway. I'm actually probably okay with the fail in this instance, so we're not gonna use the power reroll. So she's gonna get three fire tokens in the pool. One, two, three. And then on level one, she gets to keep a token in the pool, but there is none to keep. Uh, and so she will then rewind. And her rewind puts her right back there. And that's the end of our turn. But we've got three fire tokens in the pool, right? So that's better than nothing. We go over here. First thing we do, Merciless Sun. No, no, first thing we do is extinguish possibilities. So, Muffled stays on top. Mark for Death stays on top. Deluge of Memories goes away. And you live. Uh-oh. <laughs> We are about to have some unfortunate obling. Cool, and then Merciless Sun. So we're gonna fly all the way over to here. And is then gonna target the unshaded board. Everyone is currently shaded. Uh, and then glaciate the time anchor of the Titan with the lowest fate. So that will be Heraclides or Otis, we get to choose. So I think we will uh, do Heraclides. Um, we'll glaciate Otis zeros, which will go to there, and he will rewind to there. I oh, know it's it's rewind the Titan with the highest, uh, which is actually her. So she's already rewound. Good start. Good start. All right, now we draw his AI card, the chump. Deny the supplicant. Tonight, Titan on the highest occupied VP. Wonderful. Zone one. There's no one in zone one. Judge. So because it's a zone attack, um, that's it. I don't think anything happens now. Titan on the highest occupied vantage point, there is not one. And then zone one, so it just targets everyone on zone one. There is no one in zone one. So no judgments, and that's it. So then at the end of the round, we perform the sun's will, which is a laser signature, the lowest danger in front, so that is literally anyone Move lateral and attack. It's a triple laser signature. So our best option here <clears throat> is to target Heraclides, which will cause this and this to go away. And so that's it. After attack, rewind. Zero damage first turn. You're very welcome. We survived turn one. <laughs> And that's the power of uh, wise providence in this battle. It's not getting wounds, it's, it's preventing damage. Okay, whom is our most likely to get damage through at this point in time? The probability blade is our strongest possibility because it starts with quite a few hits. So, <coughs> Otis will go, he's going to move one, two, three to there, and he's going to make an attack with the probability blade, it's plus five to hit, there's three fire tokens in the pool, um, 
And then he's a five. He will gain a rage. He will commit using the probability blade. He rolls a five. Come on, son. And we get seven. Oh, that's pretty ordinary, actually. So, I mean, we'd, we're a chance. Depends what we roll on the whites, right? Uh, we do have power reroll available, so we'd like to get a wound here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Awful roll. We'll spend that to power reroll that. So that alone is five. So we need two. Two on this, which is uh, it's only fifty fifty. Come on, son. Oh no. Fails to wound. Uh, we get hope two, we get opening two, we get break two, and we leave two fire in there. So that's okay. And nothing else goes wrong. Uh, all Titans in zone one gain a danger. Bang. If adjacent, you are time clocked. However... He does have the ability to use his advanced reflex, so he will use his advanced reflex to move to there. Reposition two. Mm. Uh, yep, yeah, so we'll go like so. That's him done. Shame. Uh, I guess we could use fate saver. Nah, that's fine. End of his turn. A lot of tokens in there now. So the Ascender with the Shade Shield is going to need sevens to hit, but it's likely to do a wound. The Returner is almost certain to do a wound. <coughs> uh, we just need to put his thing back. Uh, or Ulyssia with the Phoenix Blade. Uh, Ulyssia. Oh, this is going to be one of the only times I've ever been happy that I had this. I put the Glacial Fabric on Ulyssia. How good is that? She's going to be able to bypass and move through a Titan. It's a great day. One, two, three, four. She will move to there and she will... Glaciate an adjacent space, maybe. Yep, she's going to glaciate an adjacent space and she's going to glaciate this one right here. Spending a fate. And then she's going to attack with her Phoenix Xiphos sword. Uh, she's hitting on one, two, three, four, five. So she's hitting on, f and she's got a precision from being a fused soul. So she's going to gain a rage and spend a fate to reroll that two into a five. So that's two hits. Uh, mouth feeler. Need a six, but we're two whites and a red, and we've got a lot more tokens in the pool. Uh, that is actually enough because uh, I've got to remember to move that. We have two hope in the pool. One, two, uh, three, four, and then we have two breaks, five, six. So we actually get there with just that bad roll. Hope, what a powerful, what a powerful supportive action it is. Um, only one wound in the first turn. Suboptimal. <laughs> just going to mark how many turns we've. We're actually on two turns now because wise providence means you skip the first turn. So we've got two turns down after the end of this round. Uh, and we've done a wound. Okay, so the Phoenix Iphos puts two opening. We lose a fire, but we put two fire back in there. And then she is at level one, so she will put another opening in the pool. Puts a Rouse token from the Siren Mask. She can inspire someone. No one needs to inspire. She can vault. She's not vaulting, but she will reposition one, two. 
She gains the Muffled Condition card because of the wound effect. Yep. <clears throat> and she has Glaciated already. She's done her Rouse. She's done her Opening, her Fire, and her Inspire 1, Tumble Vault, Reposition 2. She's done. Uh, Shade Shield is probably our best now. We have a reposition two. I think we do not, so we'll try one, two, three, four, five to here. Uh, reposition one. Shade Shield. It's just hitting on a seven. Six, sorry. Hitting on a six. Come on, Heraclides. Don't let me down, mate. Shade shield, have a... No. Uh, we don't need to commit, so I don't need to do that. Seven goes a six. It's a crit miss, so we'll spend a fate to re-roll. I preempted that. <laughs> Come on, Dino. Six. And it's six because we have Argo Cryptex, which is plus one. One, two, three. Four is a six. That's lucky. We hit. Skull jaw. Wound is create a vantage point. Uh, we've roused, so we get to count ourselves as AI two, <coughs> or Kratos table two, which is two rerolls, which is pretty nice. Uh, the shade shield is a white and a black, and the ascender is a red. The uh, ascender has an auto break one. So we've got four break tokens in the pool. And we've got two re-rolls to try and hit an eight. We're a chance. Oh, and we also have an automatic power from the shade shield itself. We aren't attacking from a shaded space. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But we will use a power re-roll on this one. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Good job, team. Uh, I think we only needed that. That. So the shade shield. Hope two, opening two, reposition one. We have a black on level one. Two hope. And his reposition will be to here. So, that is our uh, wound, which has created a vantage point. Unfortunately, the um, returner will not be able to benefit from that vantage point because she has a thing. <coughs> so, how do we approach it with her? If we do this... We go one, two, three to here. Go to there. Uh, I definitely need to do an escalation. And we'll have a shot with the sphere cast. Gain a rage. And a fate to commit. There's two in the pool. Uh, she does not have her thing there. She can't do that. Can't re-establish her time anchor. So uh, plus one from her repurposed crypt text, plus two from her sphere cast, plus three, four from the tokens in the pool, means she's a six. Oh, I was about to kick over to a seven. We'll re-roll that. It's a six. Had some lucky ones there. Oh, it's a lot. Uh, five reds. So we'd be time clocked here, which wouldn't be too bad. Uh, one fire, two hope, one black in the pool. Remember to do that, Dana. 
Oh, it's a shit hot roll. Wow, we got it. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, black. Does nothing, but we got there anyway. Wow, rewind. So she will rewind to here and she will move across with her reposition one from the sphere cast. Uh, in the pool, because she is on level two, she will put a black, she'll keep an opening, and she will add one, two, three fire into the pool. Someone else can motivate one. We don't need anyone else to motivate. And someone else can motivate again, but that's fine. Uh, she'll use her fate safer before she makes a swing to go down by one. That's it. That's another turn down. We've done four wounds to this guy. Three wounds. Three wounds to this guy. Uh, so the three wounds plus the two turns that we've already had. Puts us at five, and we need to survive for 10. Uh, that's everything, end of primordial round, end of time. Okay, cool. So we will go over here, we will extinguish possibilities. I don't think we've done anything yet. So muffled, already got it. Mark for death. Break the wheel. Come on, man. Let me be a fucking god. Oh, look, it's you died. The only opal card in the deck. Um, <clears throat> okay. Over to here. So this champion is going to do his sun move. He's going to move down to here. And then he's going to shoot everyone. The only person who's currently in the shaded, uh, unshaded position is her. But she does have a Pursuer Ultimatum to potentially move into shaded. Do we want her to maybe gain some? How much does it do? It shit deals three danger and one fate. Getting a few extra danger doesn't really hurt us. Uh, that item is exhausted. Doesn't really benefit us though because she doesn't have any. <clears throat> I think we will save her and spend a fate to use the sewer and parrot ultimatum to move to there. She's done. Uh, the sun move is done. Glaciate the time anchor of the Titan with the lowest fate. So that is Heraclides. So his time anchor gets glaciated. And we, we rewind the Titan with the highest fate, which is Penelope. All right, we move on to the AI card, and it is Prism of Helios. Target, priority target. It is going to be Penelope, isn't it? Oh, damn, she's going to get hit. <coughs> All right, so we haven't done a lot of this in this fight so far, but we're going to glaciate <coughs> C5. F. Eight. And I-12. Move lateral and attack. We are moving lateral to there and attacking. Burn. Each Titan hit raises their drama to eight and draws an oval. Oh, she's going to die. It's actually interesting though because she's got cheat fate. Yeah, so I think we'll do that. Move lateral and attack. Can't do anything about it. Each Titan hit raises danger to nine. And draws an oval. Um, 
Cool. She's going to use her cheat fate. When you're about to draw an oval, you may choose to draw a you live. Instead, next time you draw an oval, you must draw a you died. After attack, rewind. She's already rewound. Prism of Helios, done. <coughs> then he's going to do his lowest danger in front attack, which is going to be against... Otis is on one, Heraclides or Fisher. So we'll go on Fisher. So he's going to slide one, two to there to get in range of Fisher. Hit that, hit that, hit that. <coughs> no one suffers any danger. We've finished our third turn and we've done three wounds. If we can do four wounds this turn, we're through. All right, I think it's unlikely that we're going to get the returner into position. So let's play it smart. <clears throat> She'll and exhaust all of her gear. Use her fate safer. And should move. One, two, three, four to there. One, two, three, four to there. <coughs> She'll draw and resolve a major trauma because she's muffled. We know it's mark for death. She loses a fate. Carrying the priority target token. And that now leaves the warkeeper. And the Ascender, who are both in range, we have created a VP, yes? We have. So, the Shade Shield is not going to get any benefit from attacking from a... <clears throat> any additional benefit, I should say. The Warkeeper has Icarus Lot, which gives it scale. I think scale is you just automatically climb a VP. automatically succeed. So let's not roll any dice for that. Let's just move over here. We'll start his turn here. She was here. She was there. So he will just scale onto the VP. Swing with the probability blade. And rage. No commit on the probability blade, no. Nope. He rolls a crit miss though, so we'll roll a one. Seven. <coughs> Ten. One, two, three. Unlikely. <clears throat> Black token in the pool. Uh, because we're on the VP1, we do gain a single power. I don't even know if this is possible. A max roll, maybe. So if we go, that was a one. One. Two, three, four, five, six. Use our black for this. Seven, eight. Now, so we come up short. 
We don't have any auto breaks, do we? No. Fine. Instinct, all Titans in zone two gain a danger. And if adjacent, gain time clock. Unfortunately, I don't think it specifies if the VP is adjacent or not. I'm going to have to check. Maybe it is adjacent. <coughs> Vantage points. 59. Ah, Titans on VPs are considered adjacent and in range one to the primordial and to all Titans adjacent to this primordial. Great. So, all Titans in zone two gain a danger, bang. And he is, if adjacent, time clocked. He is adjacent. I don't know if I spent a fade or not, but I'm just going to use that. Uh, so he's time clocked. That's his turn. But we do get to build the pool. Two openings from our wonderful sword. To hope. We'll leave the two fire because we didn't use it. Two breaks on level one, and another opening on level two. No, he is on level two. We could have him arrive from time clock now, but I'm actually happy with him off the board at the moment. Uh, so the only one left to go is the Ascender. Five. He's going to try and climb. Uh, a one is definitely not a success. Uh, so he'll make an attack from where he is. Uh, he needs a one, two, three, six. That's a nine. Can't get crit chances with him anyway, but seven. Create a vantage point if he succeeds. He should succeed. He's rolling a white or black. A red, he's got an auto break, he's got an automatic power, and he's got 50,000 tokens. I think he's there already, but. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's enough. That's our fourth wound. We create another vantage point. Um, so we'll build the pool. We have hope two, opening two, reposition one. We have a black. And that's it at the moment. Black, hope two, opening two. Oh, and he's got Commander Electrion, so he adds another opening. Over here, it's another escalation. Um, and has he got a reposition? I think he does. Reposition one. All right, he's taken some heat this turn. <laughs> Literally. Speaking of, end of the Titan round, nothing triggers. Start of the primordial round, we extinguish possibilities. It's still muffled on top. It's still gained two fate on top. Or was it? Awakening, man. You're an annoying game sometimes. <laughs> Merciless Sun targets the unshaded board. This guy's going to whip over here. And he's going to hit just the Ascender. The Ascender's got no way to do anything about that. So he's just going to take a hit. 
It's a three on a ten. One, two, three. One, two, three. Uh, oh, he re-established his time anchor there too. Uh, he's got one re-roll, so we'll re-roll that. He misses all three of them. Each hit deals three danger and one fate. So that's one, two, three, fate. And he has Siren Cataphract Armor. So he's going to go down to eight danger. And could you imagine if I had the Awakening on top right now? I would be so wrapped. Grave Trauma, Disemboweled, you die. Well, I do have a second chance. So I think we will definitely take a second chance at this point. And... Uh, the Grave Trauma says, at death's door, suffer death one. We do survive a oval. So we gain an opening. <clears throat> and that's, sorry, we're not opening, a precision token. That's him done. Uh... Rewind the Titan with the highest fate. We can move his Titan 1. So the highest fate on the board is actually him. So he actually rewinds, which isn't too bad for us. And glaciate the time anchor of the Titan with the lowest. And that is Fisher. So that will be glaciated over here. That's the sun. Draw the AI card. The lowest danger in front, that is once again Fisher. I think. Yep. It is a triple laser attack. So this guy is going to go zoop right here and zap that and zap that. No one is attacked. I love that. So that sunlight laser is gone, and now we do this one, which is once again the lowest danger in front. And look, it's exactly the same, and she's just getting fried all over the place. That's it. It's the end of another turn. So we're at four and four. If we do two wounds, we are successful in defeating this dude. I don't think we can get the Ascender in range, but if we spend a Fate, uh, he can use the Sun Guard to do an Advanced Reflex. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, and we'll try and motivate him uh, to get him into range. So, the Returner is in position. So she's gonna go first. She's probably not going to do the wound, but that's okay, because she can add a few tokens. Yep. So the return is going to move one, two to there. And she's going to fire the sphere cast. It's at plus five. She needs a four. It's a six. She has to commit. I don't know if she's going to get there. Nine. Okay. It's four reds, plus a red for her, plus we've got a black and two hope tokens. Unlikely. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. We'll re-roll this with the black token. Six. Nothing at all. No wound. So fail. All Titans in zone one, which is just her, gain a danger. I can do about that, I don't think. So she has to draw an oval, which means she has to draw a dyed oval. That sucks, man. <clears throat> I mean, I suppose I didn't have to put her in. Actually, she's not in zone one. Oh, man, how good would that be if I just moved her into zone one? What a chump. She's not in zone one, and she's not adjacent, so she doesn't suffer any penalty. Whew. But... We can leave two openings in the pool. 
We can motivate the ascender twice. One, two. This goes back to here. And we put three fire tokens in the pool. One, two, three. And we put a black in the pool. So I think the Phoenix Xiphos is probably our best bet now because we can get a Rouse token in there. And we hope... Ah, oh, the Ascender's hitting pretty high now. Nah, we'll go the Phoenix Xiphos. One, two, three. She will attempt to climb with a Fury. Don't think that's enough for her. Three, one Fury. Uh, Fisher. No fury. We'll re-roll that attempt with fate. Seven's enough. So she gets onto the vantage point. We'll attack with the Phoenix Xiphos. She's plus one, plus two, three, four, five, six. She's hitting on fours. That's a critical. Eight. Oh, we're a chance here. We're a chance. Two whites and a red. Lots of tokens in the pool. Free power reroll. I think we might have just come up short there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we'll reroll using a black. Don't have auto break or anything. Oh, come on, Deno. Come on, mate. Yeah, that's enough. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. Good work, black token. Until the end of the battle, laser attacks. Oh, of course, and we had being on the um, on the thing as well, which gives us a bonus one. You may reset your fate. And you may perform a bonus attack. Well, let's go over here and do this, which is not great. One wound and we get through. We've got five wounds down. So what do we put in the pool? It's got two opening. It's got two fire. Oh, we can't attack with it again because it's a bonus attack. And we discard it after you finish resolving the attack with this weapon. That's okay. I think we're better off with the Shade Shield anyway. Uh, break, opening, and arouse is what we've got in the pool now. And she can reposition two. She will reposition uh, one, two. Over there. Uh, the Ascender is in range. One, two, three, four, five. He will attempt to climb up. Come on, Ascender. A two is a fail, but I think at this point... We definitely re-roll that with a fate. It's a five. No, that's not enough. Uh, he will... He doesn't have that anymore because he's used it. He will attempt to swing with the shade shield. He is one, two, three, four, five. So he needs a five to hit. It's a critical. Oh, he can't get crit chances, this dickhead. <laughs> But, it's only an 8. We have a black, a white, two reds, an auto break because he's an ascender. And we have an automatic power from the shade shield. If we don't get this, I'd be surprised. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's enough. Whew, no Titan's dead. The Death's Door would have killed him. But we barely survived, so we'll take that. A lot of good resources. Six wounds that time. Which is going to get us some stuff, some toys. Six wounds is two sunburned souls and one specific harpy or oracle resource. Two sunburned skulls. One, two. And sure, we'll go close flesh. Plus, skull, tentacle, tentacle. Wow, lots of good shit, actually. Uh, one, two, 
one, two ambrosia, three, four ambrosia, five ambrosia, one, two, three, four, four rising tentacles, and one, two, three, four skulls. Cool. We reset all of our things. The least likely Argonaut gains a Nemos node, which I think is this guy, from winning that battle, I believe. Victory, the least likely Argonaut gains a Nemos node. Six, victory, reset Triskelion, subtract three. We didn't critically wound. So, reset Triskelions. That was an interesting fight. Um, that was Providence made a huge difference, really. Huge difference. One oh seven, I think it was. Marked paragraph. <clears throat> you ascend the Acropolis deck, still reeling from the ferocity of the battle you have just endured, barely. The knowledge that you have uncovered still rocks you to your core. Icarus became the sun descendant. He sacrificed his crew, his chariot, everything in order to succeed. And you helped him. Unwittingly, but the blame still rests heavily on your consciences. It takes you a moment to realise that something is off. There is this hard-to-describe stillness. Normally, even when becalmed, the Argo still rocks back and forth on the surface of the waves, a familiar thrum rumbling through its heart. The crew rushes about on a dozen complex tasks to keep the behemoth running. Now your home is utterly silent and still. You spot a figure on the prow of the ship, the old priest gazing out over the icy landscape of Delphi. You approach him, calling out, but he does not move. You step up next to him and place a hand on his shoulder, but he is ice cold and does not yield to your touch as if he is made of stone or ice. He has not been harmed and neither has your crew. The melodic, oddly familiar voice comes from directly behind you. This is merely a temporary measure. You spin around to see the giant, half the size of your titans. Golden robes swaddle his frame, while several pairs of large, expansive wings spread out behind him, their feathers glimmering with shards of reflected light. In the dazzling, dizzying patterns, you catch glimpses of strained sights. Myriad eyes gazing out at you, flickers of flame, splinters of black-veined ice. A golden mask looks down upon you. The eyes behind it, once filled with sorrowful, despairing weariness, now hold a different light. Confident, empowered, all-knowing. Icarus nods his head as if to turn to... Nods his head to you as you turn to face him. I felt, after everything we had been through together, that it was best we speak face to face, rather than with prying ears and eyes of others. Demand an explanation from Icarus. Delphian's Diplomacy plus one. Or attack him. Twilight Watch Diplomacy plus one. What do we need? Doesn't really matter. Um, I guess we'll just, we'll just talk to him. Delphian's plus one. We saw the scriptos recording, you exclaim. What have you done? What was necessary? The losses were the missing variable. The towering golden figure states dismissively, and success was achieved. I found the perfect iteration. Now, and for all time permutations, I have done what my father wanted of me. I have exceeded the limits placed upon mortals. I am perfected. You betrayed your crew, you sputter. Killed them all. Doomed Delphi. Unavoidable. Expected due to the nature of the scope of this mission. Thus, acceptable. Icarus's voice, while lilting and beautiful in a strange hypnotic way, is devoid of emotion, cold, calculating. This time lock is my cradle. Unfortunately, it is only a half step. More needs to be done to proceed beyond my father's design, to impress even him. For a fraction of a second, there is spite there. He is still mortal in some way. You keep your expressions neutral, trying your best not to show any emotions, but inside your minds are seething. Icarus is so different from the kind but lost man you knew before, reforged by the crucible of his impossible mission and his father's desire into a cruel, pitiless being. The price of perfection seems too high. Gain an Argo knowledge and two Argo fate, which will be irrelevant in a moment, I'm sure. 117. So what happens now, you ask? I have fulfilled my father's visions and reached the sun, Icarus responds, but it is still not enough. I shall surpass anything his limited mind could have dreamed of. For a moment, you hear faint anger resonate in his words. I have become the heir apparent to the throne left vacant, the true descendant of the sun itself, and I will seize it. Do you even hear yourself, the party leader sputters? This is madness. <laughs> no, this is inevitable. The gold mask hand head tilts. At the end of this vicious cycle of Delphi, 
for it has served its purpose as cradle and crucible. I shall close it. I am not utterly without gratitude, Argonauts. In thanks for your help, I have undone the eschaton here, as promised, so you could experience the world you worked so hard to restore. There is a tint of cruelty there, you think. He extends his hands, gesturing to the wasteland around you. You half expect the landscape to morph into the idyllic plains before your eyes, but nothing happens. Nothing has changed, the party leader growls through his teeth. Not powerful enough? You do not comprehend. The twilight epoch was never the original future of Hellas. Hellas. This is what a world without the eschaton becomes. This is the future you fought so hard to bring back. A world driven to the ground by cruel gods and their blind worshippers. Mine will be better. Numbness floods your limbs at his words, shock coursing through your bodies. I must depart now. My purpose calls me to the sun's domain, where Helios once held court, where the descendant finally becomes the heir. I have repaid my debt to you, Argonauts. Whatever comes, I suggest you do not interfere. He is gone as suddenly as he appeared, and time on the Argo begins to flow again. For you, though, that moment lingers, and realisation of the truth and your part in it, and yet, in some strange way, it's a liberating feeling. All this time, as you were sailing Delphi, you wrestled with your conscience, questioning whether you should try and bring back the pre-Eschaton world, and the answer was there all along. The only way is forward. Later that night, you reconvene with your close allies to discuss what needs to be done. You plan to challenge him, asks the war philosopher Socro Taroes. You glance at each other. This isn't even a question. You are the Argonauts. We need to reach that. One of you points to the night sky, where the shape of the sun's domain is visible against the moon. We'll find him there. And then. He isn't omniscient, and the future isn't set, says the old priest, for he would not caution you to not intervene. A part of him is still mortal. We can exploit his anger. Or appease his humanity. Well, the remnants of the imperative, or aspirant, or whatever the chariot's name is, will not take us there at the moment. But we've seen it done, and what I can see I can build. What I require is more components, and we need to find where the rest of the ship crashed down. You simply nod, and soon the Argo is underway once more, following the trail of the fallen chariot. We need to find the second piece of the same chariot, and we need to flip to Eschaton side 2B, 3B. And locate the rest of the chariots. All right, friends, so we have to find the second half of the chariot. As I discussed at the start of this episode, I didn't realize that we hadn't actually revealed that information yet, but there you go, you now find out. Um, and we will um, start that very, very shortly. However, unfortunately, at the end of this day, we are going to loop. And the loop is going to take us right back to, yes, you guessed it, Ariadne's anchor where the burden is standing. So that is going to gain us an unavoidable doom, which means next day, or rather right now, we fight the burden, and then we're going to trigger the next doom card. So that's going to all happen next episode. Looking forward to it. Hope you enjoyed this one. Um, we'll catch you all in the next episode. Big Dano out.